APCO Educational Topic Number 50, Gestational Trophoblastic Neoplasia. Gestational trophoblastic disease, or GTD, are abnormal proliferations of trophoblasts from the placenta. Gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, or GTN, otherwise known as malignant GTD, include choriocarcinoma, placental site trophoblastic tumor, and invasive moles. These may follow a normal pregnancy or a hydatidiform mole. In the past, the majority of patients with GTN localized to the uterus were cured with hysterectomy, but metastatic disease was associated with extremely high mortality rates. Now, with the ability to measure beta-HCG levels and highly effective chemotherapy, most women with GTN can be cured and their reproductive function preserved. The objectives of this video are to describe the symptoms and physical exam findings of a patient with GTN, including molar pregnancy, to describe the diagnostic methods, treatment options, and follow-up for GTN, including molar pregnancy, and to recognize the difference between molar pregnancy and malignant GTN. Hydatidiform moles, otherwise known as molar pregnancies, are non-invasive, localized tumors that result from abnormal fertilization events that result in proliferation of trophoblastic tissues. They are classified as partial or complete molar pregnancies. Partial and complete hydatidiform moles are distinct disease processes, although they are managed similarly. In a partial molar pregnancy, a haploid ovum is fertilized by two sperm. This results in a triploid karyotype of 69XXX or 69XXY. There is often a fetus present that is small for gestational age that usually dies in utero. These rarely go on to become malignant. Complete molar pregnancies are a result of two sperm fertilizing an empty ovum. The karyotype will be 46XX or 46XY. The fetus will be absent and there is a 6 to 32 percent chance of a complete mole becoming malignant. Gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, or malignant GTD, can thus develop from an invasive hydatidiform mole from a choriocarcinoma or a placental site trophoblastic tumor. Invasive moles are characterized by edematous chorionic villi with trophoblast proliferation that can invade into the myometrium. Choriocarcinomas can come from normal pregnancies or molar pregnancies, and they are composed of neoplastic syncytotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast without chorionic villi. Placental site trophoblastic tumors are relatively rare and are characterized by an absence of villi with proliferation of intermediate trophoblast cells. The three major risk factors for gestational trophoblastic disease are 1. Advanced maternal age, 2. History of gestational trophoblastic disease, and 3. Asian, Native American, or African ancestry. Let's now move to signs and symptoms. The most common symptom of a molar pregnancy is abnormal vaginal bleeding. For a complete molar pregnancy, signs and symptoms can include uterine enlargement greater than expected for gestational age, absent fetal heart tones, cystic enlargement of the ovaries, hyperemesis gravidarum, and an abnormally high level of HCG for gestational age. For a partial molar pregnancy, the signs and symptoms are often similar to miscarriage with vaginal bleeding and absent fetal heart tones. Women with malignant GTD may have subtle signs and symptoms of disease, making the diagnosis more difficult. Abnormal bleeding for more than six weeks following any pregnancy, normal or abnormal, should be evaluated with beta-HCG testing to exclude a new pregnancy or GTD. Let's now discuss diagnosis. A complete molar pregnancy can be identified on ultrasound with a diffuse heterogeneous echogenic pattern that is referred to as a snowstorm pattern. Large cystic ovaries on ultrasound can also support the diagnosis of a complete molar pregnancy. Postmolar GTN is most frequently diagnosed from increasing or plateauing beta-HCG values after evacuation of a mole. With GTN following a normal pregnancy, an elevated beta-HCG level and exclusion of pregnancy make the diagnosis. Let's now move on to treatment. The preferred method of evacuation for a molar pregnancy is suction dilation and curatage. A hysterectomy can be performed for women who do not wish to preserve childbearing. For follow-up, patients should be monitored with serial beta-HCG levels at 48 hours post-evacuation, every one to two weeks while elevated, and then monthly for another six months. During this time, the patient should use a reliable contraception. If malignant GTD is diagnosed, many patients will be referred to a cancer specialist and there should be an immediate evaluation for metastases. This includes a number of blood tests as well as imaging studies. If there is no metastatic disease found, the patient can be treated with weekly chemotherapy which will be intramuscular methotrexate with a cure rate close to 100%. Hysterectomy will shorten the duration and amount of chemotherapy required but it is not necessary for patients who wish to preserve childbearing. 
If metastatic disease is found, then the patient should be referred to a specialist for possible cancer staging and treatment with multi-agent chemotherapy and possibly radiation. Patients should use reliable contraception during treatment and for the first year after remission. This concludes the APCO video on gestational trophoblastic disease. We have discussed signs, symptoms, and therapeutic options for this condition in women.